Once, the world enjoyed an age of prosperity, until one night when it all ended. Now two heroes, Jules McCaffrey and Quinn the Clever, walk the ruins of yesterday in search of a brighter future in the dark lands of the world before. Today's episode, Not Quite Paradise. In the vast landscape of the states, the earth is marred with monolithic structures, warehouses where the corrupt forge their wealth on the shoulders of the ignorant oppressed. Here we find a lone woman approaching a solitary store located just off the road in the middle of the Arizona wasteland. Morning, customer. <laughs> it's sunset, actually, Heinrich. Looks like you got a screw loose. This is Thatcher Mar 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 Market. The best store for the best American, American, American patriots. It sure is. Is your keeper in? Unfortunately, Mr. Thatcher is out, 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 thin. Thanks. Bye-bye, buddy. Try Patriot Crunch Chips with its spicy new flavor, Red Glare. Mr. Thatcher, we got a customer. Oh, Miss McTavish. It's good to see you again. No worse for wear, I see. Thanks, Mr. Thatcher. What's going on with Heinrich? He seems a little... sparky. Oh, you know these old junker bots. If it's not sparks, it's something else. And who's this? You just start working here? Y Yes, ma'am. My name's Spence. Nice to meet you. Young Spence here is about to be done with his third day on the job. <laughs> Came crawling in from the Darklands, dry as a cactus. M Mr. Thatcher has been really swell. He gave me some water and a place to rest. It seemed only right that I make it up to him by working for him. <laughs> <laughs> Miss McTavish? He's no employee. Look at the way he stands. That creepy gate. Those bloodshot eyes. Probably a marauder. And Mr. Thatcher always threatens a Darklander before he'll do business with him, even if he's met him before. And Thatcher cared more about old Heinrich than he did his own family, so the old man would chop his own pecker off before he saw the metal dope sparking. Oh, I... Hmm. <laughs> oh, I heard you were good. But damn, you pegged me quickly. Renly the Chameleon Karen. You owe Mr. Bluth a whole lot of money. And he sent none other than Trisha McTavish after me. It's Colt when I'm on the job. Mmm, she's got a big piece there, boss. Of course she does. That's Cannon's, her namesake, numbnuts. We'll have to hold on to it after we blast her. I've never disguised myself as a woman before, but I relish the challenge of going up to Mr. Bluth as her and putting the old man down myself. Blast me? With what army? I knew he would send someone, so I gathered a little posse for the occasion. Thirteen against one. A little unfair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> unfair, she says. Then again, I guess it is. One six-shooter can't take out all of us. And I'm going to need more bullets. What? What? What does she mean by? Great entrance, babe. <laughs> ben goddamn Troy. It's Gatling when I'm working. Colton Gatling? Oof! Damn you! Hm. This was easy money. Kinda sucks for Mr. Thatcher, though. Eh. He was a hateful, bitter old-timer. If it wasn't Renly, it probably would have been someone else. You think any of these other guys have bounties on them, too? Dunno. Let's take their heads in just to be safe. You better take mine, too. I won't go quietly. That's why you're spending the trip unconscious. No wonder he's a master of disguise. 
With a face like that, I try and hide it too. Ugh, I hate this part of the job. Don't go away. The dark lands of the world before will be back after these messages. Tonight on Citizen Revere, a crisis grips the nation as the champion of the United States loses his powers. What's happening to me? What's happening to the American spirit? Citizen Revere, a new enemy threatens our country. You must defeat it, but you must do so as a man. Our hero's love will be tested. I have to help Citizen Vivia. If he could stop evil as a man, then so can I as an American woman. Yes, Sink. You can actually match the power of Emperor Napoleon, you silly American pig. And the very name of Citizen Revere will be called into question. Fear not, America. Your champion may be weakened, but our nation will forever be strong, for I am your new white knight. Citizen Doss! Who is this strange doppelganger? And why does he wear the amulet of 1776? Citizen Revere, catch the new episode tonight only on Channel 11. I am Vic Pullman, and tonight on Here in America with Vic Pullman, we delve into the horrors of Republic experimentation with turning our women into butt lovers. How could you possibly love a machine? I can't help it. His glistening armor, his beady red laser eyes. Paper or plastic, ma'am? And he cares about my opinion. And then, we speak with an actual citizen of the former state of Madison and hear about the atrocities committed by the Republic during their occupation. The governor threw down the flag and surrendered. California bear was hoisted in its place. The scoundrels, trying to erase the very identity of an American state. I guess uh, there wasn't a whole lot of food at first. Because the Republic fat cats were stuffing their faces while American children starved in the streets. What? Uh, not really. They eventually rolled up in these big trucks full of food and my family was quite happy. Truly a scene of tyranny where the American suffers while the Californian laughs. But we really weren't. And finally, we meet with Hakon Pierce, director of American Frontline 13, to discuss the next chapter of the award-winning video game series, brought to you by Eagle Arts Games. You know, some people may say that the uh, game's predatory due to the uh, implementation of surprise elements. Clearly. None of them are true Americans. Oh, absolutely, Vic. We at EA Games fully believe that it is the God-given right of all of our players to be able to spend real American money for a chance to win that rare drop that will turn their game around. It's a perfect system. No flaws. You are a revolutionary within the U.S. game industry. Of course. EA demands only perfection from its developers even if it means prolonged estrangement from family and loved ones. Getting the top dollar, no matter the cost. All of that and more tonight on Here in America with Vic Pullman. Only on Channel 4. Enjoying the show? Then why not hit that subscribe button and ring that bell? That way you never miss any of our exquisite programs and lets us know that you love them. Speaking of which, welcome back to the dark lands of the world before. 748, 749, and 50. It's all here. From the Chameleon Bounty. You'd think at least one of those other guys would have done something to warrant a price on them. But I guess Renly hired from the bottom of the barrel. Well, he wasn't particularly bright either. A bounty hunter walks right up to him and says, I'm taking you in. And he doesn't think something's off. Not that it would have mattered. We would have just gone with plan B. Why don't you open up? I want to see my boyfriend. <laughs> There's my handsome man. Most of him, at least. I don't know. You look like the complete package to me. Plus, I can look into those eyes of yours forever. Weirdo. Ow! <laughs> All right, if you're going to start throwing hands, I'm going back in the suit. Fine. Go back into your sardine can, little fishy. I didn't want to share the tabs with you anyway. You better share. 
I did do the heavy lifting. Yeah, and I was the distraction. Which was our plan. It was my plan. And my bounty originally. Okay, if we're going to play this game, wasn't it yours truly who saved your sorry button, Shreveport? You remember, when the fuglier had you pinned and- All right, all right, you don't need to make it personal. Such a bitch. Never said I wasn't. I've been thinking. That's dangerous. <laughs> I know. But what I was thinking about, maybe giving you know what another try. You were so cool earlier when you came crashing through the door like that. I couldn't help but get a little excited. <laughs> All right then, come here. Let's see how flexible you are. <laughs> so, that's how you have relations. Ugh. Hey, boss. I do apologize for my intrusion. I would never purposely interrupt such a touching moment between a young woman and her double amputee and a ten-foot armored exosuit boyfriend, unless it was important. What's the job? A lovely little bounty has graced my desk, and it's one that I know you two would be perfect for. I hate to break up the Darkland's strangest coitus, but I do need to emphasize haste on this particular job. Evidently, the bounty has spread far and wide, and the turnout, by my reports, has been colorful. The hell? Who's the mark? One Jules Kalem McCaffrey. 1,000 tabs alive, 3,000 dead. 3,000? The client has an obvious preference. Well, bring it on! It's not like we haven't done jobs with competition before. Competition isn't the word I would use exactly. What do you mean? Uh, I can barely hear you. The signal out here is horrendous. I'll tell you more when you reach the Republic. Ta-ta for now! Sounds like we're going home. 3,000 dead. I still can't fathom that number. McCaffrey is going to be swarming with hunters. The Nevada border isn't too far from here. We'll be in the Republic in a couple of days. For now, though, let's take a breather. Ben, he said we should hurry. We are not moving an inch until your chamber is properly loaded. <laughs> Oh, God, I love you. And I love you, Trish. The Dark Lands have an uncanny ability to change everyone who ventures into it. Often for worse than better, but in some cases, the change is purely cosmetic. As Mean Marcy roars down the road, our heroes have no idea they're on a collision course with the destinies of many. What will the final outcome be? Well, there's only one way to find out. Subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss the next pulse-pounding episode of The Dark Lands of the World Before! Hey there folks, this is Master Mimic, also known as TJ Krovo, the director, writer, and overall producer of The Dark Lands of the World Before. And I'm here to do some shoutouts to the amazing cast that made this episode just absolutely amazing to work on. First, I tip my hat to Diana Kennedy for playing Trish Colt McTavish, and then right next to her is James Newman, who played Ben Troy. Jordan Anderson, bringing the manager to life. And then what are two bounty hunters without a bounty, in the form of Renly the Chameleon Charon, played by Miriam Muhenny. And then Jeremy Volkman plays Spence, and then Dylan Mahoney comes back into the show to play Heinrich. And then our longtime collaborator, Balcasaur, stepping in to play Mr. Thatcher. As for our commercial segments, Tetsuya, who played Vic Pullman of Here in America with Vic Pullman, Faye Holiday as Bot Loving Woman, and then Brad J. Taylor playing Hakon Pierce, the EA representative. That's Eagle Arts, not the real life company, you know, disclaimer. Jeremy Volkman playing the Servidor Bot. <laughs> and then you got Drake Ericato playing the show announcer for Citizen Revere Part 2. Anthony Cook reprising his role as Citizen Revere. Alongside him is Tabitha McNeil as Mary Todd. And then the newcomers, Chris Highwell as Emperor Napoleon and Kevin Gibson as Citizen Doss. You all have my most sincere thanks for bringing the dark lands of the world before to life yet again, one more time. And I can't wait to work with every single one of you again and to see where the future of the dark lands will take us.